This video is one in a series brought to you by the American College of Surgeons Clinical Research Program. The videos in this series were specifically designed to illustrate the conduct of oncologically critical steps of cancer operations as described in the Operative Standards for Cancer Surgery Manuals. In the following video, we will highlight the key steps to a safe and oncologically sound superimesenteric artery dissection as part of the pancreatoduodenectomy. As a group, patients who undergo pancreatoduodenectomy for adenocarcinoma and whose surgical margins are free of cancer live longer than those in whom macroscopic or microscopic disease is identified at any margin. This artist's rendition of the specimen removed by pancreatoduodenectomy depicts the three margins that should be examined by the pathologist per AJCC and CAP guidelines. These include the common bile duct margin, the pancreatic parenchymal margin, and the retroperitoneal or superior mesenteric artery margin. While the common bile duct margin and the pancreatic parenchymal margins can be re-resected if the intraoperative histopathologic analysis shows cancer cells at the initial site of transection, the superior mesenteric artery margin cannot be re-resected without resection and reconstruction of the artery. This assumes that all the tissue between the pancreatic uncinate process and the superior mesenteric artery have been removed with the surgical specimen, the proper technique for all patients with cancers of the head of the pancreas. This picture highlights the tissue between the uncinate process and the superior mesenteric artery, labeled as the SMA margin, which must be removed in all cases. Access to and resection of all the soft tissue adjacent to the superior mesenteric artery can be technically challenging. For these reasons, the superior mesenteric artery margin has historically been the margin most frequently involved by cancer following pancreatic oduodenectomy. In this video, we will illustrate techniques that may be used to conduct a complete dissection along the right lateral aspect of the superior mesenteric artery so as to maximize the likelihood of a margin negative surgical resection. To ensure the most complete resection possible, the right lateral aspect of the superior mesenteric artery should be dissected in its periadventitial plane from the caudal border of the uncinate process to the takeoff of the superior mesenteric artery from the aorta. This dissection should be conducted for all patients with adenocarcinoma, irrespective of the apparent distance between the tumor and the superior mesenteric artery on cross-sectional imaging, because radiographically occult cancer cells often extend from the tumor through the retroperitoneal soft tissues towards the superior mesenteric artery. This is a 3D reconstruction of a patient's CT scan showing the relevant anatomy. The superior mesenteric artery courses in its normal anatomic position deep to and to the left of the superior mesenteric vein. Note that the splenic vein, the inferior mesenteric vein, and the first jejunal vein often course superficial to the superior mesenteric artery and drain into the superior mesenteric vein. While the splenic vein routinely courses superficial to the superior mesenteric artery, the course of the inferior mesenteric vein and the first jejunal vein are more variable. In this patient, the inferior mesenteric vein courses superficial to the superior mesenteric artery to drain into the superior mesenteric vein. However, the inferior mesenteric vein will often drain directly into the splenic vein. Also, in this patient, the first jejunal vein courses superficial to the superior mesenteric artery, but more commonly, this vein courses deep to the artery to drain into the superior mesenteric vein often referred to as a posterior jejunal vein. The course of these venous tributaries can vary significantly between patients. When these veins course superficial to the superior mesenteric artery, they may restrict access to the artery, in which case they can either be retracted gently out of the way or ligated and transected if this is not possible. Therefore, the relationships between each of these veins and the superior mesenteric artery, as well as their relationships to the tumor, must be completely evaluated and understood in each patient Close attention to these relationships on cross-sectional imaging allows the surgeon to completely plan the conduct of the anticipated surgical procedure prior to proceeding to the operating room. The first step to proper exposure and dissection of the superior mesenteric artery is a wide coker maneuver. The specimen is elevated off the inferior vena cava to the patient's left, along with all the surrounding soft tissue and the lymphatics in nodal station 13. Mobilization should not stop at the level of the inferior vena cava, but should continue to the patient's left until the left renal vein is well exposed, sweeping all the soft tissue superficial to the vena cava to the patient's left. At the end of the coker maneuver, the left renal vein and aortal cable space, including nodal stations 16B, 1, and 2, are fully exposed. However, resection of the aortal cable lymph nodes in station 16 need not be routinely performed. A wide coker maneuver allows for a thorough regional lymphadenectomy 
and also allows for early identification of the superior mesenteric artery by palpation, thereby facilitating safe subsequent dissection. Following transection of the pancreatic parenchyma and mobilization of the jejunum into the upper abdomen, a full dissection of lymph nodes both superficial and deep to the common hepatic artery in the nodal stations 8A and 8P should be performed. This dissection may begin where the coker maneuver left off, mobilizing the tissue off the posterior aspect of the portal vein. The portal vein is then retracted caudally, and the tissue is dissected off the anterior and cephalad borders of the portal vein. And finally, lymphatic tissues are dissected off the common hepatic artery in a superficial to deep and cephalad to caudal direction. Control of the common hepatic artery with a vessel loop greatly facilitates this dissection. Once this tissue is free of the common hepatic artery, it will be flipped down to be resected with the rest of the specimen. Dissection is then carried back down towards the origin of the common hepatic artery and towards the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. Here the dissection plane connects with the previously performed Coker maneuver so that the origin of the superior mesenteric artery can be fully delineated. Of note, the coronary vein will often be encountered in this space as well and should be preserved when possible. As seen here, with the Coker maneuver and dissection of the hepatic artery completed, all the soft tissue in this area has been cleared. The cephalad aspect of the superior mesenteric artery has been clearly defined. Conditions are now ideal for the conduct of the superior mesenteric artery dissection. We will now highlight one of the two primary approaches to the superior mesenteric artery. If the tumor is not adherent to the right lateral aspect of the portal vein or superior mesenteric vein, the vein may be simply retracted to the left to expose the length of the superior mesenteric artery. In this instructive case, the tumor is located cephalad in the head of the pancreas and appears easily separable from the superior mesenteric vein. The superior mesenteric artery is noted in its normal anatomic position, coursing deep and to the patient's left of the superior mesenteric vein. The splenic vein is seen here and courses superficial to the superior mesenteric artery. Additional surgically relevant anatomy is notable for a large first adjunal vein which courses superficial to the superior mesenteric artery to drain into the primary main superior mesenteric vein, quite cephalad, near the caudal aspect of the pancreas. The inferior mesenteric vein drains into the first adjunal vein at the confluence. Because the tumor appears easily separable from the vein, we can plan to gain exposure to the superior mesenteric artery by retracting the vein to the patient's left. In the operating room, the pancreatic parenchyma has been transected and the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein have been controlled with vessel loops to facilitate retraction of the vein. The first jejunal vein and splenic vein are also controlled with vessel loops. Here we see the portal vein, splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein, and first jejunal vein, all controlled with blue vessel loops. With the vein branches controlled, the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein are simply retracted to the patient's left. Note that the surgeon's left hand is simultaneously used to retract the specimen to the patient's right. With proper positioning, the tissues adjacent to the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric artery itself are accentuated. The soft tissues directly superficial to the palpable superior mesenteric artery are opened with electrocautery to expose the adventitia of the anterior surface of the artery. Once this proper plane has been established, it can be safely developed cephalad along the right lateral aspect of the artery. During the dissection, care must be taken to identify and individually ligate the inferior pancreatic duodenal arteries as demonstrated here. We typically doubly ligate these arteries with silk and proline sutures prior to transection. Dissection is continued along the periadventitial plane. At the cephalatmos aspect of the superior mesenteric artery, dissection connects with the plane previously established by proper conduct of the hepatic artery node dissection, as seen here. Here we have a nice view of the surgeon's left hand retracting the specimen to the patient's right and exposing the right side of the superior mesenteric artery for safe dissection. As the section is carried deep to the superior mesenteric artery, the relatively avascular retroperitoneal tissues posterior to the artery may be transected using an energy device. At the end of the section, we see the vein pulled to the patient's left and the superior mesenteric artery fully dissected free from the specimen. It should be noted that the tumor is still adherent to the cephalad aspect of the portal vein. However, this did not affect our ability to pull the vein to the left to perform our SMA dissection. 
In the next case, we will demonstrate the approach to the superior mesenteric artery that may be taken when the tumor appears inseparable from the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein, thereby limiting retraction of the vein to the patient's left. In this scenario, the vein may be retracted to the patient's right and block with the specimen. In this instructive patient CT scan, the superior mesenteric artery is seen arising from the aorta and has a typical relationship with the superior mesenteric vein. In this case, the tumor in the head of the pancreas closely approximates the superior mesenteric vein, suggesting likely adherence. The soft tissue between the uncinet process and the lateral border of the superior mesenteric artery appear to be free of growth disease. In this case, the first adrenal vein courses posterior to the superior mesenteric artery and drains into the superior mesenteric vein adjacent to the tumor, suggesting the potential need to control and or ligate this tributary in the operating room. Note that this vein typically courses deep to the superior mesenteric artery right at the level of the caudal uncinate process. Thus, this vein may effectively be used as a landmark for the caudal aspect of the superior mesenteric artery dissection. In this patient, the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein just to the left of the splenic vein superior mesenteric vein confluence. Finally, the splenic vein enters the confluence cephalad, suggesting that it should be easily retracted further cephalad to gain access to the proximal superior mesenteric artery. We will now show the relevant operative technique. The pancreatic parenchyma has been transected. Here we see the splenic vein, the superior mesenteric vein, and the superior mesenteric artery, which is still covered by soft tissue. Additionally, we see the tumor here adherent to the superior mesenteric vein portal vein confluence. The splenic vein is looped and retracted cephalad. The anterior adventitial surface of the superior mesenteric artery is exposed. This plane is then developed cephalad, again connecting with the plane open during the previous hepatic artery nodal dissection. Dissection is carried along the right lateral aspect of the artery. Note that in this patient, the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein, and therefore its course is not relevant to the superior mesenteric artery dissection. However, the inferior mesenteric vein often courses superficial to the superior mesenteric artery, in which case ligation of the vein may be required to access the artery. As the lateral border of the superior mesenteric artery is dissected out, great care must be taken to identify the inferior pancreatic duodenal arteries. Here one of these arteries is identified and dissected out. Once dissected out, the artery is ligated and transected. Once again, as dissection is carried deep to the artery, the posterior retroperitoneal tissues can be divided using an energy device. Here, a second inferior pancreatic duodenal artery is identified, dissected out, ligated with suture, and transected. Caudally, the dissection is developed down to the level of the first jejunal vein, which again courses deep to the superior mesenteric artery. Once dissected out, the first jejunal vein is controlled with a blue vessel loop. At this point, the specimen is fully free of the superior mesenteric artery and only adherent to the vein. For any case where the tumor appears adherent to the vein, this is our preferred technique. Separating the specimen from the superior mesenteric artery first and leaving the venous attachments for last. The posterior jejunal vein is now ligated and transected given what in this case appears to be tumor at the confluence of the superior mesenteric vein. A side-biting Satinsky clamp is then used to control the vein and the specimen is sharply dissected from the vein. At the end of the proper dissection, we see the vascular structures fully skeletonized. The common hepatic artery is skeletonized around 360 degrees of its circumference. Here we see the superior mesenteric artery. The right lateral aspect is fully dissected from the level of the posterior jejunal vein caudally to the takeoff of the superior mesenteric artery cephalad. Finally, the relevant venous structures have been fully skeletonized with all surrounding lymphatics and soft tissue resected. In conclusion, this video has demonstrated a safe and oncologically sound technique for dissection of the superior mesenteric artery during pancreatoduodenectomy. A periadventitial dissection of the right lateral border of the superior mesenteric artery is necessary for all patients with pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma of the head of the pancreas to ensure the highest possible rate of margin negative resection.